Hi everyone, Simon from Horrorman Studio. Today I wanted to do a short video about uh, what I do when I finish a commission project or a personal project actually. Uh, so this will be a review of all the steps I go through uh, in order to maximize the reuse of things that have been produced and also minimize the issues that might arise when you reopen a file in the future. Uh, I won't go into details on how to actually do the steps because they would be like topics in themselves in small videos, but it will give you like a nice checklist of uh, what to keep in mind when you finish a project. Of course, this is like tailored for my own workflow, but I think it's proven pretty reliable and solid so far, hence why I think it might be worth uh, sharing it with you. And also, uh, it might include steps that you don't have in your own workflow that might be worthwhile to add. So let's get started. So the first step will be on your 3D models um, and it will be like five main steps. The first one will be to export all the textures in a designated folder so that basically everything is self-contained when you reopen the folder or the file. To do that, I use a bitmap collector, which is pretty handy uh, plugin, but there are like many others that do the same thing. The second step will be to export specific assets uh, organization that I'm happy with. For instance, if I started like putting together uh, like a table with some chairs and some uh, props on it and I'm happy with it and I might reuse it, then I will export the whole thing and I usually do that with a connector. I will also export assets that I've modeled that could be reused because uh, it would be a waste of time to remodel them in the future if I ever need them. Another thing that might be useful that I always do also is to export uh, bespoke materials that could be reused. I will now generally put them in the new V-Ray material library and that way in future projects I can reuse them and tweak them a little instead of starting from scratch. The last thing that is quite important as well but that I do uh, rarely but still try to do it uh, when I can is to export forest pack presets or ray clone presets that I created and that I'm happy with so that I can reuse them and use them as a base for a future project. So the whole purpose here is to sort of repurpose done work so that you don't have to redo it all the time and use them as a base rather than to start from scratch all the time. Regarding the PSD files of Photoshop or whatever you're using for your post-processing, uh, there's just uh, like three steps mainly. The first one is that I'll basically save the 2D cutouts uh, that I found really nice and that might be a little bit hard to find again in the future. So I'll usually save them in the appropriate folder of my like cutout folder. And the other thing that I'll do also is to delete all the versions of my PSD files because usually I will have like three, four, five version and I don't want to have like all the PSD files because it adds up to like several gigs of uh, data that I don't need to keep. So what I'll do is that I'll keep flattened versions of the previous versions and I'll keep like the final uh, PSD. So that's all for the Photoshop. One thing also that could be done but is less and less necessary since like storage is pretty easy is to compress your PSD file uh, when possible. I don't mean compress in a zip file but compress like in the, the way it's saved because usually what I do is that I don't compress them when I work on them because that way they save actually quicker. So that'll be all for the processing part. In terms of like folder structure in general, what I'll do when I finish a project is to first delete all the old files and previous versions of like read the ones I know I won't use because usually I'll have like three or four or even more versions of my uh, 3ds Max files or stuff like that. And I know I won't need like the draft version or the earlier versions. So these I will delete. One other thing that I will delete is all the batches passes or batch passes that I've had in the past because I usually keep them in case. Uh, what I do is that I sometimes revisit them, but I keep some of them for the videos that I'm doing. But in terms of like actual professional work and commission work, I will never use them again. One thing that could be though interesting is also to archive uh, potential good views that didn't pass the sort of pruning review and put them in a folder of things, kind of like things I want to work on if I get the time. So uh, this is a pretty interesting thing for like when you have a bit of extra time if you want to work on them. And one last thing that I do usually is to reorganize the references uh, files that I used and put them in my own folders, usually using Eagle. 
in terms of like communication and marketing, uh, what I'll do is that I'll generally put all the final images and scheduled them, schedules them, sorry, for my Instagram and Facebook posts. Uh, of course, when it's like competition, I'll keep them on hold until the client is uh, okay to, to post them, but still are sort of like have this scheduling thing. I'll also uh, update my website when this is possible. And uh, sometimes I'll also print like a final version just to have like a pretty nice physical folder of all the, the visuals that I've done. Regarding like archiving system management, uh, I tend to like, I actually work entirely from the cloud. So all my computer basically is synced on Dropbox. So what I do is that I have, I will sync the, um, the file on Dropbox and then unsync it uh, from my computer so that I can like free some space, but I will still keep it on the cloud. Another thing that I'll do is that I'll keep uh, like a physical copy, or if I may say like a local copy on one of my uh, hard drive, like internal one and an extra copy on an external hard drive. That way I have like three uh, backups basically of the each project, which is should be enough for uh, what I'm doing. In terms of client communication, uh, there's like a few steps that you need to go through when you finish a project. The first one should be to send your invoice, although usually you should have done it like earlier uh, before like the actual end of the project so that you actually receive your money around the end of your project. Uh, what I sometimes do is that I also make extra images. So it generally won't hurt and it can help them from like for your client's website to show actually that you're interested in your project, in their project, and that you're interested in working with them. And also you can show your skills for like other types of rendering. You can also work on like views that might have uh, been interesting, but that you didn't get the time to work on, or that for like the brief that you had were not uh, worth going through, but that the client actually would have liked. So this is something I usually try to do to make like a couple of extra images because it doesn't take that long once the 3D is already done. One thing that I'll do also uh, through Dropbox is that I'll make a special link uh, where they can access their images anytime in case they lose them or whatever, because sometimes clients get back to you like several months later and be like, do you still have like those images? So that way they have like their own lo little uh, box where they can just get all the projects they've worked uh, on with me. One thing that I sometimes do is also to give a sort of how to mockups on how to use the images in publications because uh, even though like sometimes you know that the clients will end up cropping your image weirdly. So what I do is that I have like a sort of a, a readme file where I'd give like uh, high res crops of what could be interesting to on how to basically crop the image properly without completely destroying the composition. And also one thing that could be fun when you have like really big clients or um, like old time clients or when you're like winning a proper competition or whatever is that you can send like physical prints for a project if this was like a, yeah, as I said, like a long and intense project or if you just want to make it stand out. And one last thing that you should do in terms of client communication is to say thank you. Uh, even if it didn't go that well, I would always be like, um, what's the word? Uh, grateful for like the opportunity to work with a client and sort of like make it work and hopefully uh, work again with the, the client and for competition as well because sometimes clients are a little bit uh, bad at that is to ask uh, to stay in touch when they get the results so I guess that will be it for the client communication the one very last step that I think is fundamental and that most people sort of um, what's the word skip is this idea of doing like teardowns of your own work, which is what I've been trying to do and starting to do uh, at least recording uh, lately on the, um, the channel is to do teardowns of your own work and sort of know um, basically what worked and what didn't work. So on the regarding the image, you can have a look at what you're happy with and what you're not happy with. Um, and sort of see uh, what you can save and what could have been better and where it kind of go wrong. And in terms of like, um, in terms of reference again, it's like this idea of checking what options you didn't use but thought that could be nice and maybe you might be able to reuse them in another project. In terms of communication with the client also, it's nice to sort of think back to uh, 
this communication even see if there was any difficulties in communication with your client that you would like to not see happen again and sort of like go back to the root of where this might have happened and sort of correct that in the future with uh, the same client or other clients. And on the contrary, it's also also interesting to know what went well and where do you think it was coming from so that you can also reproduce this sort of thing and sort of fine tune your workflow over time. So that's it for the video. I'm pretty sure I covered everything uh, or at least the main steps. Let me know in the comment section what you think, uh, if you do things differently or just don't care about that kind of topic and just pile stuff on your computer and never go back to it. Or maybe you have like uh, important steps that I might have forgotten, uh, in which case I'd love to hear about it. So anyway, thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.